All right. So before we start this podcast, we just want to take a minute to thank our sponsors, Boss Play. You can find them over at www.bossplay. Nope. Boss-play. Boss-play.com. They're an escape room in Oceanside, California. They have two different escape rooms, the Prohibition Ransom and the Chocolate Factory. And if you are anywhere around the area or if you can get to the area, you should definitely check them out. They've been helping our show out for almost the last year now. We yeah. really appreciate them. And if you went and told them that we told you about them, I think they would appreciate that too. So if you if you got the time, you should definitely check them out. Taylor and Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Taylor and Alan. I seen that. Taylor. That's me. I have some problems with you, sir. Oh, what's new? Number one, Hobgoblins. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. I did. So I, I saw your video this morning. I didn't get to finish it. I watched about half of it. Just the little bit that I saw, I'm almost at the point where I'm starting to feel bad. You should. It's the but worst thing I've ever seen. I Like, I didn't think it could get worse than Saving Christmas. <laughs> this was so bad. I like couldn't believe how bad it was. Yeah, I'm. I don't know. I don't remember how I came across someone. <laughs> Is it worse than Jack and Jill? Ooh, um, it's different. <sighs> it's different because Jack and Jill yeah. is offensive because it doesn't need to be so bad. This is bad, what? Because it's like '80s bad, right? Yeah, and it. I said it in the video. I called it. I said maybe they're going for satire, but that's not really. I don't, I know it wasn't really satire. I think what they were doing was tongue in cheek, somewhat. They're like, we know this is bad, but this is just for fun. Um, so you think it was like a Sharknado type thing? Almost, almost not as not as. Uh, Self aware, but like a similar yeah. a similar tone to Sharknado. They're like, we know this is goofy, but like, just just hang out. It'll be a good time. It's not. It's a terrible movie, <laughs> and uh, none of it makes sense. But I think they're somewhat aware that it was bad, just not aware enough to make it funny bad. You know? Yeah. Um, but it, none of it made sense. The hobgoblins would like trick people into seeing these hallucinations that were like their fantasy like their like what they wanted like one one guy really wanted a girlfriend and so he hallucinated this girl but it was never clear or well it was clear that other people could see it but it never made sense why they could see it because they're like it's a figment of your imagination but it's a projection of his imagination do you know what i'm saying right yeah um and then it was like i don't know it was very strange one of them wanted to be like rambo basically he wanted to be like this super fighter one of them wanted to be like a hero like to his girlfriend and i don't know i thought so in the beginning the cold open the guy gets killed but he thinks he's a um like a rock star but then they cut back and he's dead. So I was like, oh, there. He's. He, he hallucinated it. It was all in his head. He was never on stage. And so right. I, I thought when the main guy went into the vault, the rest of the movie was his death hallucination, was him living out this fantasy of wanting to be a hero. But that's not what it was. I thought that would have been a, a better ending to find out, oh, he's been dead this whole time. This sounds fantastic. <laughs> it was so bad. It was so painful to watch. Is uh, there is there any notable people in this movie? Uh, I don't think so. No one I recognize it at least. Oh, okay. Um But yeah, that was real real rough. <laughs> not not a good time. It's funny cuz the the problem is that you waited so long to watch it. Now we're only a week away from potentially another one. I know. I and that was, any sequel. What's that? I wonder if there's any sequels. I hope not. There's got to be. There's got to be four of those movies. 
Oh, yeah. I, I ended up waiting so long because my motorbike got stolen. Then I was right. hunting that down, and then my mom was out for a visit. And so I was just like, I never had a chance Turns to do out, it. She's the one who stole the bike. I know. Crazy. Oh, man, it was so bad. But uh, we got some comments this week on some of our stuff. Okay. Um, I intend to get back to doing the trailer breakdowns and what's coming out. But I just haven't had a chance to... I've been trying to get caught up on everything else. So I haven't had a great chance to get back into this. But uh, on our Blade Runner podcast... Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to screw up this name. Tell me if you can pronounce this. D-I-A-R-M-U-I-D. Diramude? M-U-I-D? D-I-A-R-M-U-I-D. Diramude? 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 I don't know. Um, he says, personally, I believe that Blade Runner as a film is incredible. It's shot and produced nearly perfectly. The world bu- building is amazing. As for enjoyment, I have mixed emotions about it. I understand many criticisms and tend to agree with many of them. I agree with Chris Stuckman when he says multiple viewings are really required before making up your mind. So Mm. this is on the first Blade Runner, which I I I still think (sighs) that it's not a very good movie. It's Uh, yeah. I don't like my my issue. I don't I don't want I don't want part of the reason like. I need to, to enjoy a movie. I shouldn't have to watch it multiple times. Yeah, I don't want homework to enjoy it. Like it needs, for it to be a good movie, it needs to be able to stand on its own. Yeah. And to need a, to need to watch it a bunch of times to appreciate it, which I understand when you're c- c- calling it like art, when that's the, it's like, man, this is a beautiful piece of art or whatever. That's one thing. But I'm not, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to watch a movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a. I think there's a different line there, and so while it can be a great piece of art, I think it can also fail at being a great movie, and there needs to be a distinction between those two things. Um. Yeah. It's. I get there. There's a lot of movies out there that do get better the more you watch them, but they're also good the first time. Yes. And so it's. Yeah, like I said, look, look, I'm never going to watch it again, so I'll never know if that's the truth. Mm. But the fact that it was not good enough the first time around is is on them. Yeah, no, I agree. Like uh, Eminem just came out with a new album like two weeks mm-hmm. ago, three weeks ago. And the first time I listened to it, I was like, well, this is not very good. I don't like this. But then the more I listened to it and the more I understood who he was talking about, what he was saying and what his frustrations were and stuff. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, this is actually really good. There's so many layers. There's a lot of depth to it. But that's because of everything else added to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's it's great. It's great art. But it's not like a... I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling because I don't want things to be easily digestible. Right? I don't want yeah. things to be like, you know, just so simple and easy to easy. get. But there's definitely a... a there's something to it where it should be enjoyable and then you can get depth out of it as well. Do you know what I'm right. saying? Exactly. Yeah. Um, and there's the, with Blade Runner, it just doesn't have that. Um, but Cameron, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, go ahead. That's all. Uh, Cameron Francis says, it's nice to hear these opinions voiced on the internet. I think people give this film far too much credit since the visuals and the music are all it, that it really has. Blade Runner. That's it. Is an absolute drag with no interesting characters or story. It's a film that tries so hard to be ambiguous and poetic that it ends up being hollow and emotionless. That's that's a perfect analysis. Yeah. Which yeah, the the visuals were great, and that was really all that I cared about. Yeah, there's nothing. All the acting was pretty bad. Like none of it was just plain. Yeah, it's just a weird movie. Um, on the punishment video, on the hobgoblin video, dear mid uh-huh. uh, do do tree. I'm oh, sorry, I'm I'm terrible with names. I once worked at a call center where I had to call people, and I would get yelled at all the time because I got a mumble mouth. <laughs> and any time I had to read someone's name, I was like, if it wasn't Smith, I just screwed it up, and I don't know oh, why. Boy. My brain is just terrible. Um, 
But he said, True Punishment would be Garbage Pell Kids movie. God help whoever oh, watches I've it. I've thought about that one. I've thought about that one. So I said, is it really that bad? And he said, it's indescribably awful. I was speechless for 12 hours after I watched it. I cannot put it into <laughs> words how bad it is. I would rather get euthanized than ever even see the trailer. And then I said, if I beat Taylor, I'll make sure to keep this in mind. He said, don't do it. That's like flicking some paper, him flicking some paper at you and then blowing him up with a bazooka. Because I said you made me, <laughs> I said you had made me watch Kirk Cameron saving Christmas. Um, oh boy, so it's that bad, huh? That's what he says. I don't know. Um, Millennial Mouse said on the punishment video, "I think it's adorable that you're uh, contemplating that this film is some sort of satire. The film is pretty aimless in terms of its structure, tone, and story. The movie clearly has no idea what it's trying to be and winded up being a mess. Then again." This serves as no surprise considering the film came out in the 80s. And I agree. Yeah. I think that... The, 80s was a weird time for movies. Yeah. No, for sure. They had... So, so weird. It was uh so, like, everything. Everything that came out in the 80s was so hyper-realistic. And uh, yeah. it was, I think, because it was right at the time they are figuring out how to do special effects. And so they're like, well, we can do this now. And it doesn't have to be grounded in reality. And they lost sight of story in service of effects. And yep. so, you, like, you see movies now that do that, like uh, Fast and the Furious. You watch it and you're like, oh, this is not very good. This is not, oh, yes. you know, like, it's it's pretty empty. And uh, at the time, that's what a lot of the stuff in the 80s was. Uh, yeah. It's... But, so it's so it's so distinctive too like you could pop in a movie and within the first 10 seconds like oh this is an 80s movie yeah well i mean just something i mean there's a camera is the quality there's a you can do that with almost any generation don't you think fine (laughs) um but yeah no i i don't know uh hobgoblins was terrible it was very hurtful that that's a movie you chose to make me watch. I thought we were friends, but clearly we're mm. not. Oh, no, that ended a year ago. A year ago. <laughs> when we started this competition. <laughs> um, but yeah, so over on Patreon, you can help us decide who has to pay the next punishment. For a dollar, you can vote for me or you can vote for Taylor. And whoever has the least amount of votes at the end of the month has to watch a bad movie that the other picks. I only need oh, two man. votes to take them over, just so you know, in case you're... It's a dollar if you want to help me out. Or keep the money coming to me and we're going to let this train keep on rolling. <laughs> but uh, we'll be back with the podcast in a couple of days. And it should be, let me see, I have my list. Uh, split. Should be a podcast on Split coming out next. Okay. 